Yaman! Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you mushrooms, codfish, or salted saltfish stew. Alright, so it's mushroom codfish stew. Alright, so you're gonna need about half a pound of codfish, stock of scallion. Two between three garlic cloves, a small tomato, rosemary, about a teaspoon of rosemary, grinded rosemary, tablespoon parsley, tablespoon basil, tablespoon basil, a teaspoon of marjoram. half a teaspoon of oregano two old cloves quarter teaspoon of dried pimento berries a tablespoon of wine vinegar or you can use distilled white vinegar half scotch bunny pepper or you can use quarter teaspoon or half teaspoon of red pepper, shredded red pepper. We're going to use half of quarter cup of ketchup and half of quarter cup of cooking oil. I use coconut oil. Alright, get a bowl. Add some water in it and then drizzle about a tablespoon of white vinegar. After you do that, add wash your raw mushrooms. And then kind of just wash them off properly. Just for assurance. There's nothing much on it to clean. The mushrooms are good. Cut it, look in between it. It's very fresh. This black part is just a part of the mushroom. All right, so once you rinse, wash, rub the mushrooms with your fingers and they are cleaned properly, remove them from the water and give them a final rinse on the running water. Note, you can use mushroom from the can, it's pretty much the same. But the fresher mushrooms tends to have a little bit better flavor than the can one. You can taste the flavor of the mushroom much more better when you cook fresh mushrooms. Alright, so do as you see me doing and kind of slice about 1 8 inch thickness mushroom slices today we're making mushroom codfish stew or you can call it mushroom salted or salt fish stew or mushroom and salt fish all right so this is the idea this is what you want put them aside for later. Cover it and put it aside for later. This is our codfish. On the codfish is a skin. This is salted, salted fish. So what I like to do is get between the codfish flesh and skin and kind of remove the skin. It's kind of an easy thing to do. Once you get beneath the skin, it's kind of hold it together. Sometimes it might be challenging, but once you get neat skin and get a hold of that skin, you can just peel it off easy from the codfish's flesh.
See, I got a, I got a groove. So once you find a groove, you gotta just keep on going. It's best if you lay the codfish on a chopping board, flat surface. So it's easier to handle. Use a knife in your right hand and use your left hand to kind of hold the codfish's skin and peel it off. Sometimes it might be challenging, but if, you, if you're patient, you'll get it. And if you're against doing it this way, you can always boil the codfish. Just wash it three or four times properly. Wash off the salt. Boil the codfish with the skin on it. Once it's boiled and cooled, just use a knife and then scrape off the, the skin. It will come off easy. But I like doing this way. I like doing it this way because... I get off the skin before I start cooking it. That way no scale at all would be in the food. Alright, so once you get off the cod's fish skin, this is what it looks like. Kind of rub off the salt on the back get off excess salt just be careful of the fish's bone it will stick you like it just did to me after that wash i'm just demonstrating but it's best if you do this part on the running water kind of wash off the excess salt. Now use your hands, be careful of the bone. I got stuck. I got stung. No, stuck. That's the word. The bone juked me. In my little, in my finger. See? Now I gotta. I'm gonna show you a tip. Whenever you're in the kitchen and you get a little cut like this, all you gotta do is just compress it as tight as possible just like I'm doing now and hold the wound the area tight compress it press it as tight as you can ever hold it and then and then do it for about less than a minute or a minute or so and then the, the bleeding will stop this is something that I do all the time I've been doing this ever since I've been doing this growing up all right, so it stopped bleeding. I'm gonna wash my hands and continue. See, see, it's not blood is not pouring out, but I'm gonna still keep this hand away for now. All right, so once you do that, remove this water. Like I said, make sure this part is washed properly. Some people soak the codfish after they rinse it off. They soak it overnight to get off the excess salt. Put in a medium-sized saucepan enough water, add a codfish, then put the saucepan to heat. Boil or tenderize codfish for five minutes. Use the pan's lid and keep it halfway open. Just so that you can see, you can almost see the spot that I got hurt but it's not bleeding. And I'm sorry if this part is offensive to some. I'm just giving you a tip because we all get hurt from time to time. So maybe it's just fate why I got hurt just now. So I'm, so I'm able to show you how to deal with a, with a situation like this. Measure and add a tablespoon of parsley. Any of these herbs, you can use it in fresh oregano. You only need about quarter teaspoon or half teaspoon of oregano. Oregano is very strong, so you don't need plenty of that herb. One tablespoon basil. One tablespoon marjoram. Not tablespoon, sorry. One teaspoon of marjoram.
fine. Two old clothes. And put them aside. Keep spices separate from herbs. Because today I'm going to show you how you can use these spices without having them in the meal. You know when you cook, when we Jamaicans eat, we, we have to take time out to take out these pimento berries and they tend there are it tends to be annoying it's not really annoying but it would be nice if we can just eat straight and not worry about taking out these berries or spices so gather all your herbs and spices and lay them on a plate Now this is rosemary. Dry the rosemary. Just grind the fine. The dried rosemary. And place a teaspoon on the plate. If the onion is not here, I probably didn't show it earlier. But you're gonna need an onion. I'm going to medium sized onion. This recipe that I'm giving you can go for a half pound to a pound codfish. And four mushrooms sliced. With the onion, remove the skin. The first layer of the onion is the strongest. If this onion looks a little different, it's local onion. It's much more stronger and it costs more. Remove the skin from the onion and cut off ends. Remove the skin from the garlic, cut off ends. And trim off spoilage if there's any. Cut off the stem end from the tomato. Remove dying leaves from the scallion. Cut off ends. It's been five minutes boiling this is what you want turn the stove off and just keep it in the water for a minute or so you don't have to you know you can't remove it now it's really because I'm busy why I don't remove it right now because it's it's cooked put some water in a bowl enough water in a bowl add drizzle two tablespoons of distilled white vinegar in the water now rinse Rinse off the tomato first. Rinse the garlics off. The tomato, the onion need not rinse. As for the scallion, this is the leaf of these scallions. This scallion is dirty, very dirty. So use your finger and rub the scallion's leaf and clean it properly. After that, give it a final rinse on the clean running water. Next, dice scallion fine. Scallion. Scallion is probably a Spanish word. it I'm tempted to say escalian all right after dicing the scallion dice I like to slice it dice 
I like to slice the onions. Now I feel comfortable taking out the see sometime some people say boil it for eight minutes but what I like to do is boil it at a lesser time let it stay in the water for about a minute or two and then take it out it's not something you do and let it stay in the water a long time because the codfish will get um, soggy or soaked with water so it will, it will, it will, it will get kind of watery if you make it stay in the water too long it will get water 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 frost <laughs> if that makes sense but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say water will soak in the it will get in the meat in the flesh of the codfish and then the codfish will be water water it was kind of full of waterish like I can't even explain that part but I hope you understand all right so grind the garlic to puree cut tomato in quarters all right so this is our ingredients for mushroom codfish stew all right, so now put to heat a medium-sized saucepan. Put the stove gauge on four, no low for now. We going we going I'm gonna show you how to maximize flavors from using these spices. So add the spices to the saucepan. Right after, add half quarter cup or four tablespoons of coconut oil cooking oil i use coconut oil it's best if you do this part on the low heat because i'm not sure but these berries might burst splash and it might hurt you so just to be cautious put the stove's gauge on low and just eat the just watch the berries you know. while these spices are flavoring the oil the codfish is cool enough where I can remove the bones see you gotta watch it, it splashes alright so do as you see me doing and debone codfish usually the bones are some large long bones that you can you'll see on the surface just feel just use your finger and feel for them and feel for for them and remove it break the codfish in big chunks it's been a minute between two the spices been in the heating oil flavoring it somewhat now would be a good time to remove use a big cooking spoon like this and remove the spices from the eating oil now the oil is flavored with the spices immediately after that put the stove gauge on four add the onions Turn the stove back up on four, medium low. Stir in the onions a few times, allow saute. Allow to saute. After 20 seconds, add diced scallion. Stir it in a couple times, allow saute. in a few times get water ready the stove's gauge is on four medium low 
after 15 seconds add mashed garlic and tomatoes the chopped tomatoes those gauges on four medium low stir it in a few times allow 20 between 30 seconds later add your codfish chunks this method is a little bit different normally I would try the codfish chunks crispy and then add it, the onion and the scallion and allow it to saute in the same sequence as you just saw and then add the mushrooms and stir fry but I totally forgot to fry the fish first but this method is a way to work well so do as you see me doing add the codfish to the sauteed onions and then add the mushrooms the codfish I mean the mushrooms and the herbs uh, once you add all the ingredients stir it in properly coat everything with the herbs this is a new recipe I'm not sure maybe people are already cooking mushroom codfish stew all right now measure and add a tablespoon of wine vinegar you can use distilled white vinegar instead stir it in add half cup water Stir that in, stir that in. Use the pan's lid. Cover the pan properly. And allow. Stove's gauge is still on four, medium low. Add half scotch bonnet pepper. Remember, keep the lid on within the time. You can shake it like this as you see me doing. Keep the lid on. It's building steam and, 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 and creating the gravy. Or it's creating the stew. You can use red pepper if you don't have access to scotch bunny pepper. All right, three minutes now since we start steaming, stewing. This is what it looks like. Remember, keep the lid on within the time. Use a wooden spoon and stir your pot in a few times just to see where you're going, just to see how, how fast the water is escaping or how fast the water is evaporating. Now, measure and add half quarter cup ketchup equivalent four tablespoons of ketchup stir it in stir it in watch the pepper keep the pepper on top use the pan's lid cover the pan properly allow five minutes now this is what it looks like we're on the right track now would be a good time to remove the pepper Stir the stew in, stir your mushroom codfish stew in. Once the stew starts to stick to the pot's bottom, that's a sign to say it's thick enough and it's ready. This is the idea, this is what you want. Turn the stove off. This is mushroom codfish stew. Put the pans later on until serving. Before serving your mushroom, mushrooms, codfish stew, stir your pot in and moist up all the ingredients. Take a scoop of this lovely looking mushrooms codfish stew or mushrooms salt fish stew or mushrooms and saltfish. Place it on on a plate of boiled hard starchy food which I wish I had. This is mushrooms, codfish or salt fish stew. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. Subscribe, like, share. You must try cooking this meal yourself. When you do, give us feedback. Mushrooms 
codfish or salt fish stew. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. Subscribe, like, share. Try cooking this meal yourself. Give us feedback. This is mushroom codfish stew. Time to sample. I'm just showing it to you, but I'm not really gonna eat this because I wanna I wanna cook some food and heat it with it. I don't have nothing right now ready to heat this with. I'm gonna cook some boiled dumplings. And maybe I'm walk up at the market and buy some bananas. Because this would be nice with some boiled hard starchy food. I know it's different. I'm trying to inspire Jamaicans to cook codfish in this way. In this way. The mushroom would come across of being expensive but if you ask me it's not it don't cost no more money than any other food that you would take vegetables on a whole is tends to be expensive it's the same price as any other vegetable it's just because we are not used to buying it so we prefer to buy what we are accustomed to instead of buying the mushroom because we think we might be wasting our money but this mushroom that you saw only cost me two bills look later i'll show you me eating it with with the food Bye. Bye for now. As you can see, there's too much oil in this stew. So what you can do is skim off some of the oil by using a spoon and kind of skim off the oil from the top. boiled some dumplings so I'm just gonna I decide to have mushrooms codfish stew with boiled dumplings Now I can tell you how these fresh mushroom taste like. Alright, the flavor of fresh mushroom is much more pronounced. You can actually taste what mushrooms taste like when you cook it fresh. It's very soft and spongy in the mouth, near to the flavor of meat but nothing like it. I don't know if that makes sense. But it has a meat texture. Near to spam. The texture of spam. Um, the flavor of it reminds me of alcohol, liquor. It has a woody flavor in a good way. You gotta watch out for bones. This one almost lodged in my throat just now. They do have boneless codfish available in the supermarket and skinless too. Um, this is a lovely meal. It's different. The flavor is different. Like I said, it reminds us. It, it's just reminding me of liquor it's like um not liquor like 
when you feel the spirit when you drink liquor is like the foreplay it's like foreplay I don't know if that makes sense but I'm just trying to describe this the flavor of this mushroom codfish stew aphrodisiac does mushroom as aphrodisiac effects I'm not sure but I'm having that feeling like a foreplay not the actual intercourse and it's like foreplay so I'm feeling in my brain and then and and on my skin too I'm a sensitive person so I'm feeling these things or I'm keen to details either way you want to put it I'm keen to details detail aphrodisiac does mushroom have aphrodisiac effects herbs blend well with this mushroom codfish stew the spiciness is about none or nil it's like the spiciness is blended blending the stew and you see how we just eating straight through without have to take out anything you're welcome you're welcome for the idea of how to use fermented berries while cooking. Until next time, bye. Yeah, man!